SeaWorld in San Antonio, Texas, owned by Anheuser-Busch, biometrically scanning those that enter the park for absolutely no reason. It was a photo ID, but now you've got to scan biometrically. And big corporations have lined up to sell biometrics and RFID to the population in preparation of the new national sales tax, new international taxes, and to track and trace everything we buy, sell, and do, which they publicly admitted in the Total Information Awareness Network that, by the way, was not canceled when they fired Admiral Poindexter. They just changed the name. So, again, you can't even go to SeaWorld without biometrically scanning now. It's disgusting. From grocery stores to your banks to ATMs, it's going in everywhere. School children have to thumb scan to get their school lunches, have to thumb scan to get on school buses in many school districts around the country. And I was just curious, curious about these scanners. What's going on with those? There. <laughs> well, just tell me then. What they are is they're, um, they scan, it's the season pass holders, they scan their hands, and it's 3D to a picture. But why wouldn't they just look at the picture of the person? Why would you? you know, the new cards don't have it. Yeah. Oh, so you're going away from somebody just looking at your picture to scanning your scanning. And, and if you don't, and if you don't want to do that, you have to show us your ID to prove that it's it's you. Yeah. And plus, you're biometrically scanned to do that. You know, the grocery stores are putting these in. <laughs> what do you think of all of this? <laughs> it's all right. So you're. Um, so, sure. so you're taking your pictures taking off, picture the, off, off the card, off the card and, and taking a 3D picture of your hand. And putting a hand scanner on there. Yes. Doesn't that kind of spread germs to do that? We have hand scanners if anybody wants. Ah, to it's all been thought of. Yeah. Very interesting system. So it's biometric. Okay. I'm not sure. I was told how to use it. What do they tell you about it? You have to it'll scan your hand. It's a 3D picture. And the person will do it twice the first time they come in, and then once every other time after that to validate them. And then, it, and then it instantly identifies them? Yes. Uh, it's normally hooked up and working, though. Yes. Why isn't it on today? It is on today. It's working today. Oh, really? It's working right now. Oh, really? Do you have a season pass? Y yes, I do. And when it, I it only works with the season pass holders because the new ones, the new season pass, don't have a picture on it. I noticed that, but when I came through, they said, oh, it's raining. You don't have to do it. Oh, they told you to cover them at first? Let them open. Uh, how long have you been using these? It just started this year. It just started. A, when, did the, when did the new season start? March 6th. Do people like it? So far, yes. But you said some people don't. Some people don't want to use it because of germs and everything. Ah. Uh. All right. Well, very interesting. Thank you. So this is the new system to get into the park. Yes. All right. Thank you. So this is the new biometric system. What does it say on the screen when it shows they're a good citizen? It says accepted. You're, you're, that means that you can come back. You can come into the park. Now let me bring this up to you guys. Uh, all over the country, grocery stores, banks, everybody are putting these in. Oh, and, they are? Yes. I didn't know that. HEB in Austin and, all, and uh, HEB in Houston uh, is starting to put it in some of their stores. I didn't know that. But I've read the federal documents where they say that you're going to have to thumb scan, yeah. biometrically scan, to uh, buy or sell anything. Oh, you've heard that? No, I, I didn't know that, but I, I heard that in the news. Um, no, sir, the exit's around the corner, turn to your left. So you heard on the news we're going to have to, but that's, that's the, I mean, that's like Big Brother. <laughs> but if you're a Christian, you kind of see it as Mark of the Beast type stuff. Yeah. Can I help you? No, we're done. I'm, just, I'm waiting, just waiting for my husband. I need yeah. to get through. Okay. Ha, 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 have you heard anybody talk about that and say it's kind of like Mark of the Beast? No, there's other people that don't want to do it, so it's I, I just have to. Um, oh, they don't tell you why they don't want to do it. Yeah, they don't tell me why they don't want to do it. They just say that they don't. What percentage? Do it. Like one out of ten doesn't want to do it, or how many? No, it's just it's really yeah, like one out of ten. Everybody else, everybody else does it because it's like wow, it's something different, you know. Oh, no, it's like the new yeah. new technology. Woo. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh look. And then take it out and do the same. <laughs> it's so easy being a global citizen. All right, you too. Sir, do you like the, system, the new system? Yes, sir, I do. You know they're going to uh, make you do that to to 
go to the grocery store. I've read the federal plans. Oh, yeah? Did you notice that you scan when you got a driver's license? No. When you got a driver's license, they didn't scan you? Remember putting your finger on the red oh, light? yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. They've been doing that for 10 years. This is part of a total grid. And I know you love your son here. You need to research biometrics. This is bad news. All right. And people need to complain about it, yeah. About what? What's bad news? About biometrics. They're going to install a new national sales tax using this. Big corporations have lined up under Homeland Security funding to put the biometrics in to get us to accept it. And so then when you scan your hand... When that happens, when you put your hand on the scanner, you then are being conditioned to be part of the system. So research it. Good talking to you. Guys, you're being biometrically enrolled. Bad news. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hey, I guess uh, you're not going to need these cameras anymore since the biometrics are going in, huh? <laughs> you know, the, the hand scan? When did that start? Uh, this season, I believe. And so no more photos? My photos are only for the, the uh, two-day passes. Two-day passes. I wonder why you didn't just stay with photos. Uh, why go to the biometrics? Something like just look at a photo. I don't know why I did that. Homeland Security. Uh, you said Homeland Security, sir? <laughs> I got a family of four. Can somebody take, my, take care of everything? Yeah. Ladies? Thank you. I got a family of four. Where do I keep going? For, uh, for what? Uh, what do I do? For photos or for passports? The passport stuff. I can have to understand it. Okay. Uh, sir, you were saying Homeland Security? Uh, who told you that? Um, I wanted to redeem my tickets to come back in a later time. Okay, well, actually, this is what I research. This is what I do. And it is actually Homeland Security with the big corporations to get us used to this. HEB is putting in thumb scanners uh, in Houston and College Station and some in Austin. Yeah, and everywhere you're going to have to thumb scan. Even when you pay cash, you have to face scan, thumb scan, or hand scan. When it happens, I want you to remember. Then they're going to... Ship or what? <laughs> Did you say it? Dictatorship, isn't it? It is. Say it for us loud. Dictatorship. That's it. It's supposed to be land of the free, home of the brave. No, but seriously, it's a federal plan to get everybody used to doing it. Then they can start a new national sales tax and go to a cashless society. No more money. You're going to scan... And I think we read about that somewhere. I think uh, a couple thousand years ago they warned us about it. But I guess it's here. I guess we're going to do it. Hey, you heard about that chip on the news? How they want all the kids to take the chip? You heard about the microchip? All right. Well, have a good one. We appreciate you. But see, this is compartmentalization. You guys are all great people. It's the, it's the corporations that are setting it up and then the good people carry out the corruption, carry out the control grid because they're not conscious of what's happening. And it's about getting rid of their jobs. It's about phasing out people at the turnstiles to look at the IDs. That's why, they, that's why the corporations are doing it. But the feds, we have their internal documents that have been public for years, have been pushing and funding and promoting uh, all of this as a pretext for total control. Mike, everything going well? Excellent. Do me a favor. I forgot to bring the phone box. Will you bring it over to me? Because I want to take some calls early in the show tonight. What is it? March 16th, uh, 2004. I'm going to cover just a few news articles. Then we'll take calls. Uh, and uh, then we will uh, go back into the news for you here on the show. So, again, please stay with us. Of course, I have been on Access TV now for nine years here in Austin. And I have had a radio show here in Austin for eight years. I've been doing a syndicated radio show uh, for coming up on six years. And I still come down twice a week uh, and do a live television show here every Tuesday night from 8 to 9, right here on Channel 10, and then back on Thursdays from 7 to 8, right here on Cable Channel 10. And again, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, 
The websites are Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Uh, we've been adding uh, video reports each week to the site. We've been writing our own news reports, our own analysis on a weekly basis. We also post mainstream and alternative news, streaming audio, video, uh, legislation, different pieces of uh, legislation around the world. We track the criminal activities of the global elite. And again, the website is Infowars.com. Then, of course, there's PrisonPlanet.com. If you want a massive education on what the New World Order is up to and how they're operating and, 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 and how they're setting up the architecture uh, of tyranny and despotism and enslavement, in the audio section of PrisonPlanet.com, we have hundreds of interviews. Hundreds. You know, Charlton Heston, G. Gordon Liddy, German defense minister, uh, you know, British technology ministers, uh, members of Congress, people who've been abused by the police, troops coming back from Iraq, uh, scientists engaged in biotech engineering of the crops. I mean, just untold knowledge of what's really going on uh, from experts around the world in that audio section, some of the best radio interviews I've done. The fact that with electronic voting, the CIA really runs most of the big electronic voting machine companies, and it's been publicly shown to be a complete fraud. Uh, that's there. Uh, we also have text archives. Uh, we have two concentration camp archives with hundreds of articles, all mainstream, about the wonderful camps for you and your family. Uh, we have archives about the elite and their occult activities. Uh, but again, all these mainstream articles that show up here, show up there, but never get put together. We bring it all together. Uh, it's, there's just so much there. We've done so much work. My webmaster here in the United States for Infowars.com, uh, my webmaster uh, in Britain for PrisonPlanet.com, uh, and we, we now have PrisonPlanet.tv uh, that's up, and it's going to have a new look and a lot of uh, other information on it. Uh, there's JonesReport.com, Infowars.net, uh, VirginUtah.com. Uh, those are just some of our websites. Interesting little... Uh, Editorial cartoon that we posted on Prison Planet yesterday. It's still up there on the main page today. Uh, Skull and Bones. You've got your two candidates there. There's there's John Forbes Carey with the donkey and George W. Bush with the with the elephant, and uh, that's your choice. And then of course uh, Ralph Nader's campaign manager from the 2000 election. He was uh, not just Skull and Bones, but George Bush's classmate. George Bush's uh, classmate. By the way, I'm going to be out in Crawford, Texas this Saturday. Um, there are several groups organizing the demonstration and the speeches, and I've been asked to give the speech after Ralph Nader. Uh, and I support a lot of what Ralph Nader has to say. I don't support a lot of his ideas because big government isn't the answer to stop the corporations. Big government is controlled by the big corporations. But I'll be giving a speech about Bush's corruption and the government-sponsored terrorism and PNAC and how they carried out 9-11 out in Crawford. I think I'm speaking at about 6 o'clock at night there. they got a stage and stuff set up in downtown Crawford. There are going to be thousands of people there. And then on Sunday, uh, down at uh, the UT Lecture Hall, I should have brought this with me. I forget the name of it. The, the, the Libertarian Distinguished Speaker Series. I'm honored to be invited to it. I'm going I'm to be the key speaker uh, at that uh, this uh, Sunday. Perhaps, Mike, you can go to LP dot or LPAustin.org, whatever the Libertarian site is. Perhaps before I get off this show, we can find out uh, which lecture hall it is. They've had Harry Brown, everybody else come in and give speeches. Because I've seen it here on Access, they re-air it. And I'm really honored to be able to be part of that. Um, so that's some of the stuff that's coming up and going on. I'm sitting here looking at all this news, and, I, and I'm trying to think to myself, you know, where should I start? Did you see that piece I played at the start of the show? I haven't been to SeaWorld in 20 years, since I was 10 years old, or 11 years old. My parents took me to SeaWorld in Orlando, and, and I know it's nothing but an aquatic zoo, and the animals aren't in very good conditions, but I thought, well, I'll take off some of the work I had to do this Saturday, and I'll, I'll just forget about the New World Order, and the global tyranny, and the cashless society tracking and taxation surveillance grid. I'll, I'll take my wife to SeaWorld. And we get to SeaWorld, and I walk up, and uh, they've got it set up where a season pass is, is, 
isn't much more than a day pass. And they said, now just go over to the, quote, passport office after they sold me you know, with my name and the scan on it. Uh, so I went over there, and they had all these cameras in there. And I said, we're going to take my picture. And they said, oh, we don't do that anymore. And I said, okay, wow, that's big brother in reverse, less surveillance. Okay. And I go back to the turnstiles, and she, she goes, okay, now scan your hand. And right there was the hand scanner, biometric scanner. And I said, no way. She said, you know, a lot of people have been saying that. You don't... You know, we just opened two weeks ago. It's our new season. They just put these in. A lot of people don't like them, about one out of ten. You don't have to do it. Now, the video you saw is when I came back later because I was shocked. had the video camera in the backpack. I didn't think to pull it out then. I was just, here's the scanner. Here's the biometrics, you know, in my face. And then we went in and saw some of the exhibits, and, and then I went back as we left and, and interviewed some of them, and that's the video uh, that, uh, that we just aired earlier. We'll air that at the end of the show for those that uh, weren't tuned in at the very first, by a little seven-and-a-half-minute uh, piece. <clears throat> but while I was talking to the people, when I first got there, I was like, this is Big Brother. It's to start taxing you. It's going in in the grocery stores. It's going in in the schools. And the ladies, yeah, I've seen it on the news. Yeah, that's scary. And the security guards are nodding. Yeah, it's, it's scary because they're hearing a lot of people say that. So, see, it's not crazy that I think that. See, it's all this peer pressure, you know, system. And I went through it, and she said, okay, well, you don't have to. And, and, and I asked her, you know, they were going to make people do it, but because of the pressure, they're like, okay, you don't have to. If you refuse, okay, you don't have to, and they just let you on through. They've taken the photo ID, the, the little digital picture, off of it. And, again, that means they can get rid of the employees in the future, uh, but, but more importantly, it's about the federal government tracking every purchase we make, everything we do, building detailed psychological uh, profiles, algorithms off of our activities. And that's what the Defense Department and the Justice Department have said. Again, none of this is my opinion. So I can't even go to SeaWorld. I mean, I haven't been to a, an amusement park in, in probably 15 years. Hadn't been to SeaWorld in 20. Been there once in Orlando when... Again, I was a child and an adolescent, and I really wanted to forget about the New World Order. We listened to music driving down there and, you know, just ignored all the cameras going up and just tried to, tried to you know, get some R&R &R from the war, and there it is. And Piggly Wiggly, Safeway, Kroger, putting in the scanners. First they put in the self-checkouts, then they get you used to it. Then they pull out most of the service checkouts with a person, make you do it. Then the thumb scanners go in. And when you complain, we, we uh, wrote an email to the uh, office of Piggly Wiggly, big chain. It's not here in Texas, uh, but it's big around the country, Midwest. And we got an email back from the CEO's office saying, Mr. Jones, it was actually Watson, my webmaster sent it, Mr. Watson uh, we do not take a digital thumbprint. It is zeros and ones. That's what biometric access in the CBS piece here locally a year ago said. Oh, we thumb scan you, but it's not hooked to a database, and it's not your thumbprint. It's a, it, it, it's, it, it's a computer. It's, it's numbers. Well, a digital photo you take of your dog or your child is zeros and ones, and then it's reassembled instantly to have an image of your finger. It's just total lawyer speak. So technically, it's not a lie. Oh, we don't take an image of your finger. It's, it's, a, it's a mathematical calculation off your finger. I mean, doesn't that insult your intelligence? It's like when we confronted John Hurt about six years ago about the cameras going up. Uh, the Department of Transportation here in Texas head spokesman in an interview, video interview we've aired here, I said, you know, this is for law enforcement. It's being used for traffic now, but it's going to be used for law enforcement. He said, Mr. Jones, no, it's not. We don't do that. And I said, ah, you are the sister agency to the DPS, the state police. You don't do law enforcement. Your infrastructure. But I go, they will use it for that. And he goes, you ought to be a lawyer. He started laughing like, ah, well, I got one that can see. You know, like out of They Live. I got one. You know, you know they talk their wristwatches. I got one that can see. You know, it was, <laughs> hell, you know you want to join us, Alex. Everybody needs a little. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, you haven't seen They Live, you won't get it. And, uh, I, you know, I, Mike just yelled from the control room. I said, so you're putting up hundreds. He goes, oh, no, thousands of cameras. We ought to air all those old shows, man. We got 
they're all an old three quarter inch tape they use down here. I've got a garage just full of those old shows. And, uh, you know, stuff eight, nine years ago, it's all come true. So I just hope you'll take us serious here on the show. But I got a bunch of emails after I posted this article a few days ago. I, I wrote a little article about SeaWorld and the, and the biometric hand scanners and what it meant. And today we posted the little eight-minute video clip on the web that you just saw. So you can feel free to tell your friends about it. If they missed the show, they can go see it on the website, InfoWars.com or PrisonPlanet.com. Uh, this is uh, from a technology site. Finger scans for passes, and it, it, it's a glowing review of how wonderful Walt Disney World is doing this. Finger scans, just the mere mention of it suggests something out of Star Trek movie. But finger scans at Walt Disney World are not evil. Oh, in fact, they are a necessity if you purchase certain Walt Disney World admission media. It says, hopefully this will take some of the fear of the unknown out of doing a finger scan for your park admission. And it goes into how it keeps you safe and how it's wonderful and how it's good. Problem is, the feds say they're going to make us all do this to buy and sell. Even if you pay cash, you've got to do it. And then that gets rid of your privacy. Uh, it does so many things. If you're not a good globalist, you'll go and try to scan and it won't work. And the police will be summoned. And, oh, another one of those crazy terrorists just got drug away. I mean, and, and, and it's not just that they could abuse it. They're saying they're going to abuse it. I read the federal documents back in 97 when I went down to the DPS where they had the thumb scanners in to get you in the database so all these grocery stores and people can interface into it. And I went into there. And I, I confronted him and said, all this is going to happen. Many of you have seen that famous footage. Um, it's just incredible. Just amazing. And, and the federal documents say it's for control. Say they're going to control your life. So it's, it's really scary, my friends. Uh, and you're saying, well, I'll still pay my lawn guy, and I'll still pay my neighbor in cash, and we'll still... The new strips in the money will make it to where if, if the money gets transferred to anybody where it wasn't part of a scanned transaction, the money will become worthless. That's what the biometrics, uh, the, 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 the RFID tracker chips that are in the new money, there's three chips in it. This is admitted. Just type RFID in euros and, and, and new dollar. And, you know, BBC, AP, oh, it's so wonderful, will pop up. And so you, so the the history of that cash is tracked, and, and so if you pay somebody with cash, it when they implement this, the infrastructure is already there, then the money will become worthless. Also, if you don't keep your money in a bank for a year, it will become worthless. I mean, this is so diabolical. I got a bunch of other news here. Other parks make you wear an RFID bracelet. To get into them, tracker chip bracelet. Uh, Wired News. Uh, Popular Science a few months ago said that they're going to deploy hundreds of blimps, 30 times the size of the Goodyear blimp. Well, this new one by DARPA, these are going to be tethered over your cities, and they have uh, ground penetrating radar. Even gets into it here. It's kind of an inside joke, though, because in the internal documents that have been public for a while, because, uh, again, the globalists all communicate with each other. Corporations do. They have press releases to each other. They have meetings. It's all in the industry stuff, all online, all public. Uh, but it's flexible radar antenna, you know, all this other stuff. And when you read that, you don't know that's, that's ground penetrating. It looks right through your walls. It says, Anaheim, California, conspiracy freaks, hold on to your ten hats. See, we're freaks because we're concerned about this. DARPA, the Pentagon's far-out research arm, may have publicly abandoned its creepiest programs like Total Information Awareness. That's not true. It's been radically expanded. They just changed the name. But the agency has shown at its DARPA Tech conference still has a project to make you run full speed into your bunker. Mighty ISIS. And ISIS is the all-seeing eye. That's the female side of Horus, the all-seeing eye. Total Information Awareness Network symbol was the all-seeing eye. They just named the new planet they found. Uh, you know, uh, after the goddess. It, it's what the globalists are obsessed with. It's cult stuff. Mighty ISIS, DARPA's 
wants to start uh, planning for a blimp three times the size of Goodyear that would keep watch over an entire city. Hovering at 70,000 feet above the ground, ISIS airship for integrated sensor and structure would use a giant flexible radar antenna to give, in words of DARPA program manager Larry Corey, a dynamic, detailed, real-time picture of all movement on or above, friendly, neutral, or enemy. We will apply this technology to track people emerging from buildings of interest and follow them as they move to new locations, says DARPA's Paul Benda. Imagine its impact it will have if Iris tracks the movement of individuals for months. Hidden webs of connections between people and facilities will be revealed. And they're going to, the, there's already some of these blimps going around, but they're smaller, you know, the size of the Goodyear. And they're tethered, uh, uh, or they're uh, out, you know, uh, schooning around. That's been going on for years. They got drones. They got FBI and 85 Cessnas, you know, with scanners. Federalized police departments with their helicopters doing it. But this is over all your cities. And, and, and Homeland Security said a few months ago, actually last year, we want to have these over watching you doing, and it looks right through your walls. Anytime they want, they just type it in. Looks right through your wall, right through fog, right through clouds, right through black and white image, crisp TV image of you in bed with your wife, you on the toilet, you in the shower, uh, whatever you're doing. Just living in glass houses. Just picture all your houses as glass. Well, glass might be hard to look through. It's not having walls. Or it's having cameras in your houses. See, Big Brother doesn't need to put cameras in your houses. They just look right through your walls. By the way, major police departments, including the APD, have backpack units that hook to a scope on a rifle that look right through your walls. Oh, you didn't know that? So that's your new freedom. Um, I thought I would also add... There's a lot of articles coming out of Europe where and uh, Defense Department people have gone public that they were in the debriefings, high-level intelligence people, that, that they've been tr planning weapons of mass destruction, trying to plant ma weapons of mass destruction, and may decide to roll those out soon. Um, also, it's clear now that the CIA carried out the bombings in Madrid. Tons of evidence there. I've done, you know, five hours the last uh, Friday and Monday and today on it on the radio. I've done a lot of my show on it, uh, but uh, it backfired on the government. When you saw those protests in the streets, those weren't against uh, what CIA, Al-Qaeda, what we think of as Al-Qaeda, the shadowy government terror arm that scares us into submission. Uh, we read the Spanish papers. We've posted them, huge sections, on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And guess what? Uh, the, the major papers are saying the people are out saying the government did it. So and, and it backfired, and the current government was thrown out, and of course replaced with something similar. But uh, the point is, is that it backfired on them right before the election. It didn't work too well for them because the people are starting to get it. By the way, there's a mass awakening taking place. I've seen it over the last two years. It's accelerating. Everywhere people are seeing the truth. Everywhere people are talking. The globalists have moved too fast. Having both candidates who are cousins in the same secret society, uh, a 1.2 trillion missing from the Pentagon, all these big corporate raiders going free while they burn some little patsy like Martha Stewart, uh, the globalists saying there are weapons of mass destruction and then saying we never said there were. Uh, it's admitted now that Haiti was a coup and the, and the administration lied and said they weren't involved. You know, it's it just... They went too far too fast. But again, it isn't Bush. Bush is a puppet. Karl Rove is a puppet. These are nobodies. It's the same military-industrial complex that owns Kerry, that owns Bush, that owns the whole system. And you better come to grips with that. You better wake up to that. Bunch of other news, but I said we go to calls earlier in the show, which we will now do. Uh, again, if you're watching this as a tape show in the future, this was a live show, uh, March 16, 2004. And again, I'm Alex Jones. The website's rinfowars.com and prisonplanet.com. We'll take some more calls, take some calls, and then get into some news. Uh, let's go ahead and take some calls. Uh, go ahead, caller. How are you doing, Alex? Fine. Will you turn your TV down? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, you answered my I'll first question mind. for me a little bit. I was going to ask about the thing. I'm going to go ahead and put him on hold. I guess we have the settings wrong in there. I apologize to you. 
uh, but I don't have any audio for you now. We may not be able to take calls. Usually we have the phone system set right. We don't tonight. Uh, but uh, go ahead, caller. Bring him back up. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. Okay. Go ahead, caller. Hello? Yes. Oh, I just want to ask you a question that I had a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I heard you say you recommended to a school teacher that she should read Machiavelli, The Prince, to her kids. Why is that? So we can see what we're up against? Or I was just wondering that question. Maybe you can answer it for me. Well, for those, uh, thank you. That's a really good question. And we've got the phones figured out now. Uh, so we'll take your calls at 477-2288. Coming up here in just a few minutes. Uh, that is a really good question. That is an excellent question. Uh, what was it in the... My memory's failing me in the 1520s or you know, right at the beginning of what you'd call the uh, official uh, renaissance. I don't want to get the date wrong. I, I read the books 10, 15 years ago, but he wrote two books. And he was a double-dealing, controlling manipulator... Uh, Italy was broken up into, what was it, like 14 different kingdoms uh, or princelings running different areas. It's kind of like Germany, a feudal state, not even unified. And he went into how to manipulate, how to control, uh, how to backstab, how to carry out crises and blame your enemies. And, yeah, people should look at the statecraft of 500 years ago to see it in action today. Also, when, a, when someone graduates from the uh, combat applications group uh, or Delta Force in the U.S. Army, uh, the, the highest you know, level of Special Forces troops, they take them from the Marines, from the Navy SEALs, from all of them. When you graduate from that, after you've gone through all the rigors and the torturous you know, training, they ask you to read Machiavelli's The Prince, and then they ask you, write an essay on what you think about this. And if you write the essay and say, I agree with him, in justifies the means, you've got to be more evil than the enemy to win. You know, it, the Masons do this. They give out questionnaires to their people. And if you're evil, they go, oh, you, you're what we need. You move up. If you're good, they go, oh, you're, you did right. Good. You'll stay right here. Uh, and, and, and if they say they're real ruthless and agree with Machiavelli, then they move up. So that's, uh, that's how they operate. Uh, let's go ahead and take some more calls. Uh, go ahead, caller. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Hi, Alex. Love your show. Thank you. Uh, I have a, have a question for you about uh, va vaccines. You've done uh, some shows, but I haven't caught a lot on them, and I'm having uh, a new child soon, and I'm wondering, can you give me some information on where to find what is right and what is wrong? For Because I've heard you talk about um, that it's a farce, basically, a lot of the vaccines that, that kids are getting days. And can you talk some more about that and uh, some information on it? Yeah, number one, do you have a computer? Yes. We can access knowledge thousands of times the size of all the world's libraries combined of just 50 years ago with a good search engine. Uh, and so you go to a good search engine, and obviously preeminent is Google. They have even more sophisticated ones. And you type in keywords, vaccine damage, the Marisol mercury, uh, UN program to sterilize through vaccines, and you will see official government documents, Henry Kissinger documents, BBC, uh, Sydney Morning Herald, Associated Press, United Press International. You could take a wheelbarrow of mainstream news articles to your doctor that goes, you don't want the vaccines, you're crazy. And you go, no, the world's round, buddy. Boom. And, 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 and you know, just dump a file cabinet of information on them. Uh, let me give you an example. A month and a half ago, ABC News did a little blurb on their website, not even on TV. And it said, well, the Centers for Disease Control, I'll put you on hold and go back to you in a second. The Centers for Disease Control uh, and uh, Prevention, really the Centers for Disease Promotion and, 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 and Eugenics and, 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 and Genocide, uh, because of Congressman Dan Burton, uh, he got a, a Dr. Geyer, top uh, scientist, worked in the federal government, he got, him, he got him to force him into their documents. And their numbers on the brain damage and the autism up now several thousand percent from 1 in 25,000 20 years ago to 1 in 168. And they'll say, well, that's over, over uh, 
you know, uh, you know that's doctors, uh, you know, over addressing it and, you know, saying, oh, people have it that don't. I mean, it's, you never saw kids all doing this. Now you go to the mall, it's, you know, about a tenth of them, you know, it, it's just everywhere, you know, rocking up and down, you know, 10 years old in their diapers. It's horrible. It's very sad. Uh, you know, my son was fine. He was 18 months. He took the shot, started convulsing, and now he sits in the corner. Shut up. Should we call the SWAT team? You know, but it was the CDC's own documents. And I covered this six months ago because they just started coming out from 2000. But, th but this was in ABC News. And they just had some of the quotes out of the minutes of the meeting. And it talked about somebody gives the 15, 18-month-old baby the shot, their brain damage, you know, what's going on. And it's the corporate minutes of the CDC. And they go, and the head doctor goes, I've seen the findings. I'm not giving my granddaughter this. And they all have a big discussion. Yeah, it's deadly. Yeah, massive brain damaging neurological problems. This thimerosal, this mercury. I mean, by the time the baby gets their second round of shots, it's something like 227 times the safe level, Dr. Geyer said. You know, top, top in the country of studying this. And, uh, but that's the CDC's own internal numbers. And then they go on to say, well, the liability's too great. Shut it down. Keep it quiet. This doesn't leave this room. So, I mean, right there is ABC News. You know, you don't want to believe me. But there's ABC News with them going, I'm not giving my granddaughter this. I mean, you know, this is the text with the person, uh, you know, typing what they said, a transcript, as they talk about it. And, 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 and this is by design, by the way. Uh, Aldous Huxley, whose brother was the first head of UNESCO at the UN, who was a bioethics eugenics thug, Aldous Huxley gave his last speech before he died at Berkeley in 62. You ought to go online and listen to it. I've heard it on my radio show. Berkeley has it in their archives. And he says, look, I came up with all this because in the socialist government, I learned about it in the 30s. He said the plan is to do this by 2000. Uh, you know, literally going in genetically, licensing babies, and of course, we're, they're behind schedule, uh, forced drugging the population, now 10 million kids on Ritalin and Prozac and a bunch of other drugs, 20 million adults on it. And, you know, in his book, they x-ray the eggs, you know, the underclass is dumbed down. I know that's horrific, but I mean, Huxley's brother uh, called for this, uh, Julian Huxley. Uh, so... What are you going to do? So I, I just, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's rooms of information. I mean, I, I've got Australian mainstream news articles where they declassify the documents where we can sterilize the women of Asia through the vaccines. They'll never know. <laughs> and uh, now all these women can't have children notice. But it's, it's, it's incredible. Uh, we could use spray planes to do it. We could put it in grain we give Asia. Uh, they caught the U.N. in tetanus shots, adding a hormone that sterilizes women. And it was a U.N. program just for women, of course. Because yeah, the U.N. said, oh, that's an accident that hormone's in there. Oh, really, the program's just for women. It wouldn't hurt men because the hormone's there, and then it, with the pathogen, bound with other things, and the body attacks that hormone, which is needed for childbirth, and causes sterilization, also causes cancer in the uh, gland that it affects. This is all admitted. I mean, I got Henry Kissinger documents from 73 on the website, direct link to the Library of Congress, where he uh, tells uh, the five most populous third world countries, you will forcibly sterilize half your women or you will get no IMF World Bank money. And they drove around grabbing women, uh, cutting their tubes. Uh, got articles about them doing it in Peru, India, just all over. Nigeria, I mean, just, just vans. You know, of UN funded thugs just driving around grabbing women. You know? <laughs> I know the yuppie response. Well, overpopulation is a problem. Well, then take the vaccines. Don't listen to me. Knock yourselves out, boys and girls. Don't listen to me. I was going to go back to you, but you hung up. So I, I hope that answered your question. And I'm glad you're concerned. I'm glad you called. I get very upset talking about it. Mike, a bunch of my articles fell off the table here. We, I can't get up and go get them. Will you give them to me? It's like I'm a legless person when I'm doing the show because I can't get up. Um, just documents everywhere. Uh, hello, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, hello. Uh, what's the evidence on Madrid? How did the CIA do the bombings in Madrid? I suggest, as I said, it's taken me five hours on the radio to go over it, uh, but uh, it's uh, key evidence. 
I actually, I have articles right here in the stack where, where the people, they claim, the Al-Qaeda guy that ran it, they claim, has been in a safe house for three years, even before 9-11, outside London and works for MI6. And uh, uh, the government was saying the attack was about to happen. Witnesses saw government people involved, just hundreds of pieces of evidence. Uh, okay, thank you. D does that answer your question? Uh, not really. Have you ever heard that oh, you don't have a question? Well, I mean, I, look, I know it's all a soundbite world for you. So, so if you don't want to hear the radio show and you don't want to hear the guest and you don't want to go to the website and read probably 50 news articles we've posted on this, uh, the major Spanish papers saying the people are protesting, saying the government did it, uh, all the evidence. I mean, if you just want to go, okay, mm, thank you, mm, you know. Mm, uh. I mean, I have the official government documents where they plan to hijack jets and crash them, to bomb D.C., to commit sniper attacks, Operation Northwoods, ABC News, Baltimore Sun, all the documents on that. People still don't want to believe it. In fact, let me just dig out some of the articles for you about Madrid. We've only got about 18 minutes left. I'll have poor Mike running here over and over again because I got here late. Didn't even have time to go through my articles and get them all straight in order. I just grabbed them off the radio desk. Mike, I can't even see the clock. Will you move it over for me? Poor guy. Um, no, that's U.S. unloading weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Uh, no, that's Mel Gibson saying that he doesn't really like Bush and thinks he's lying about the weapons of mass destruction. Um, that's DOD attempting to plant weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, thanks, Mike. That's uh, Disney World putting the thumb scanners in. That's Reuters. Uh, that's a big Reuters article in here where people think the government did it. That's just where they think the government did it, you know, the big mass protest. But uh, officials probe Spain, Morocco. Spain announces five arrests, the usual patsies. Trying to find that article. We even posted another one today. It's a long one, very detailed. Um, socialist out. <laughs> Here's one where they threw the ruling party out after the bombing. Didn't, didn't uh, work too well for them. Ooh, I'm glad you called because I would never have remembered I had all these news articles I wanted to get to. Here's one. Now, this, the Moscow Times, you hear Moscow Times, you're not going to want to believe this. But the BBC, and we have whole sections, it's in the MI5, MI6. Her Majesty's Terrorist Network section, and I published a book on the subject by uh, Paul Joseph Watson. I'm the publisher of it. But uh, the BB, BBC, London Guardian, uh, Associated Press, and others have reported on this. We have a whole archive on it. But the article I have for you tonight, just because it was in the stack I grabbed, uh, this is out of the Moscow Times, posted on PrisonPlanet.com. U.S. Harbor terrorist to bolster its case. And it, and it just gets into how they claim they assassinate somebody, they claim they have them, they've killed them, uh, and then it turns out they're working for them. And that's Abu Musab al-Jawari, and uh, it turns out he's been you know living in their safe houses. And this is who they claimed ran the terror bombings uh, in uh, Madrid. And you know they've uh, they'll they'll bust some Al Qaeda leader. We've got a whole archive on this on the site. And then quietly, people go, wait a minute, that's the CIA. And they quietly release them and go, okay, we had to, you know, sh couldn't blow their cover. You know, it was one of our agents. Uh, so it, uh, the Moscow Times uh, gets into uh, all of that again. Um, I've got some more. I had a couple more here uh, in, the, uh, in the stack. I'm trying to find them. But, sir, I mean, if you want just a simple soundbite on an issue, uh, then I really can't do it here for you. I suggest you research and go look at it for yourself. Uh, but, hey, give your liberties up. Governments have killed 200 million people in the last century, 20th century. So give your liberties up to them and go, go hand scan at HEB and thumb scan at, the, at Wally World and, and at, uh, at Sea World and, 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 and just uh, let the tethered blimps look through your walls and... And uh, the thumb scanners in the public schools, training them for that. You know, just go along with it, everything will be fine. Because I wish you'd have stayed on and told me how you disagreed. Just the simperingness of your voice 
I picked up the whole spirit of what you're up to. Uh, go ahead. Love your show, Alex. Hey, how you doing? Uh, the Tim Russert interview uh, with Bush, and he brought up the Skull and Bones. He said a number, uh, 322. I was wondering where that came from. And you also mentioned uh, the a book, Magellan, what was the name of that? McKellen. Uh, no, uh, well, I... I'm sure you've heard when something's got a lot of subterfuge and Byzantine, cloak and dagger angles, that it's, uh, you know, that's Machiavellian. Machiavellian, right. Well, so that's, you know, that's like saying that's McCarthyite. You know, they're putting a, they're pluralizing it or like a system. Uh, and uh, you said a particular book. Yeah, The Prince. Machiavellian Prince. Well, no, Machiavellian's the plural. It, it's Machiavelli's The Prince. I don't know what that is. What is that on this? Uh, Oh, that's the Libertarian website here locally? Oh, okay, for shots. That's a site Mike says is good. I, have, I don't have any knowledge of it, but I'm sure it's fine. Uh, but uh, thank you. But the 322? Yeah. Again, the earlier guy uh, called in. I mean, how can I even talk about Skull and Bones? When... I'm going to hang up. I love you. All right, thanks. I mean, how can I even get into Skull and Bones and do it justice? How can I get into 9-11 and do it justice? Uh, in this format. That's why I make documentaries, why I write books, why we play them here. Um, but, uh, I mean, I remember eight years ago telling you about Skull and Bones. God call in. Doesn't exist. You're a liar. Shut up. Um, where's your proof? You know, well, go read these ten books and these public statements and the memoirs of these presidents. You know, you've got to do that. That's what I do. I don't watch football. And, uh, yeah, they've announced they're in Skull and Bones and 322. There was in th in in three two two uh, a in the year three two two a Greek philosopher died and they claim that's what it is but also it's chapter three two two they're obsessed with numerology uh, and uh, also three two two in Genesis they said that's what it has to do with where the devil says I'll give you inter uh, you know everlasting life you'll be born again. Because uh, that's what they do. They do this ritual where they're born again, and Lucifer possesses them. And, and, and again, if you don't believe that, Francois Mitterrand, you know, at the Louvre, had that gold pyramid built, and he demanded by the U.S. architect, the Chinese-American architect, that it had 666 gold pieces of glass in it, pieces. And, you know, Tony Blair, Times of London, London Guardian last week, uh, channeling the light to get his answers, and... Uh, I've been to Bohemian Grove. I mean, I've covered it. I've done it. And, uh, you know, I still hear talk show hosts nationally and locally tell, say, I'm a raving loon. There's no skull and bones. They don't get in co coffins. I mean, they're still saying, it. oh, fine. Okay, it's not true. It's not true. Um, so, I mean, I, I just at a certain point, it's, it's just overload. Uh, let's go ahead and take another call. Uh, hello, caller. Go ahead. Good evening, Alex. How you doing? Doing fine, thank you. Uh, I caught your show about halfway through tonight, so you may have already covered this, but did you hear of the Masonic uh, initiate in New York State that got shot in the yeah. head during the initiation? Yeah, he was in Long Island. <laughs> and uh, what what up do you know of that? Well, I spent an hour on the radio about it, and uh, let me try to answer the question as quickly as possible. And again, I'm not being persnickety or irritable with you guys. I'm just tired, and all these questions are so good, and I can spend so much time on it. What's bigger is that if you do a Google search on accidental Masonic shootings during rituals, you'll find quite a few. And we posted some of those. And we have a photo on the website in last week's archive with a guy in a normal clan outfit with a pointed hat next to a guy with a pirate hat and a skull and bones. And they have that same pirate motif, and they wear the pointed hats at Bohemian Grove. That's all Masonic. The clan, the Masons... Bohemian Grove, Skull and Bones, it's all different Masonic offshoots of the same order. Higher level masonry. The low level masons don't know what's going on. It's the higher level compartments of the pyramid uh, that know what's going on. That's their structure. That's their symbol. And the police went in there, most of them masons, of course. Within an hour and a half last week, you know, last Monday in Long Island, they said, oh, it's an accident. And the guy's out on like $2,000, $2,400 bail. And they had him uh, 
chained up on the black altar with the skulls, guillotines on both sides, uh, and a lot of other torture implements down in their basement. This is the group that goes around getting the database of your child's digital photo and the DNA swab they keep because they care about the kids. And, they, and there were coffins down in there and the rest of it because they get in these coffins, do these rituals, being born again. Uh, and uh, this guy was in there, and uh, in the ritual, they fire a gun and then make the person think they're being shot at, knocking these tin cans away, you know, that are on each side of them. But accidentally, the gun was loaded with real bullets uh, and uh, blew the guy's head off. And lo and behold, we found other Masonic rituals uh, in just the last few years, clan rituals, uh, where the clan would claim they'd fired the gun in the air and it came down and just so happened to hit the initiate in the head. You shoot a gun in the air, it comes down a half mile away. Shoot it in the air, it just so happens to hit the initiate. Uh, the initiate. But the police, within an hour and a half again, said that was an accident. Hmm. You know, it's always an accident. And, and so are these where they're actually killing somebody, uh, the needed sacrifice, the requisite sacrifice? Hell, I don't know. I've just been to Bohemian Grove where they uh, do an effigy of killing a child. The Grove admits I shot the video of that. It's aired on national U.S. television. It's admitted your Christian conservative leaders worship Moloch. Look in your dictionary to find out who that is. So, yes, I'm aware of that. That's a very good question. Hello, caller. Go ahead. Hello? Yes. I was wondering if you could expand a little more on the uh, owl on the building downtown, the new building. Sure. And again, people's ignorance, they're profane, as the elite called them, profane cattle. And by profane, they don't mean profane like Howard Stern. They mean we're ignorant. We're not initiated. Architecture was the most guarded science, more valuable than salt more valuable than gold, more valuable than rubies and diamonds. And secret guilds were created, construction guilds in Egypt, special universities. And they would do rituals that they would kill you if you ever told anyone the secret of a keystone. That's what holds an arch up. That's why they call it the Royal Arch Degree. And then, and then the other... It goes up to 360 degrees that most Masons don't even know about. And, man, they just howl in anger. The 33rd degree uh, Grand Masters just go insane uh, when I talk about this. 360 is the compass. Points at the compass. Lucifer at the 360 point. But uh, most of these fools think there's only 33 degrees. Uh, I shouldn't be like that. I was once ignorant, too. You are profane. The Masons, you are profane. You don't even know. And you use your own term. You don't even know what you're part of. So stop calling us profane. Uh, and, and so what happened is uh, these construction guilds were so important. It was the most influential, powerful thing. Masons built the cathedrals uh, in Europe. That's why there's all the occultism and the stained glass, hidden occult symbols everywhere. Uh, in World War II, when the British would bomb Nazi cathedrals and the Germans would bomb British cathedrals, they'd find weird occult altars under the main altars. Mike, you're rewinding a tape and I can hear it, bro. Mike? <laughs> well, I can't do a show with that rewinding. That's great. Thank you for turning the audio off. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, let me try to get back to what I was saying, Jesus. There's so much information, that's the problem. Try to go through it all. Just please research this stuff. And so architecture is what they're about. They admit they laid they admit research the architect the French architect who designed D.C., Egyptian obelisk everywhere, the domes, which are the female, the goddess, the obelisk is the male member. That's, again, in the encyclopedia, if you don't believe me. Uh, and it's all laid out in a huge pentagram, which is the symbol of power. Um, you know, they go, oh, you're profane. And it's not the devil, it's the god of light. You know, because the star is perfect, the five points, everything in nature is the five and, 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 you know, so it goes back to nature worship and all this stuff. And so that's what they've set up. And, yes, uh, you go to the Supreme Court building, it's, it's you know, owls and, 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 and all-seeing eyes carved in it, and it's on the dollar bill. And, 
Yes, the UT Tower, I've read where the architect had built that, you know, what is it, 80 years ago. That's supposed to be an owl. Wisdom, knowledge, learning, that's the outward meaning. Well, this new building, this bank building, and they are lighting that sucker up. Uh, the uh, good old bank building uh, there, the Frost Bank building that Mike happened to pull over and get him turning it on, uh, is is designed as a great horn owl, which is their 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 Moloch symbol. Which Moloch is also a bull. A lot of their gods have double meanings. Uh, the female's the owl, the bull's the male. You know, the horn god. Uh, it, it always has two sides. Mike, how long do we have left? About five minutes. I said I'd re-air that thumb scanning piece. Just roll that in the background, Mike, from SeaWorld, uh, because when you move the clock, it quit working. And uh, just uh, yeah, just play some of the SeaWorld footage where they put the hand scanners in to get in now. I want people to see that. I said I'd air that again. We've run out of time. Uh, go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, hey, I just want to make two quick comments. The Are you talking to me? Yeah. Okay. Well, 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 I'll tell you what. Just to finish what I was saying, the architecture that – because he put that up and I got off subject. I mean, it's on the subject, but it got me diverted. The people that run things, the cult of architecture, and then the secrecy around that brought them more power and control. Uh, they put their symbols everywhere, and, and that's that's kind of their inside joke. And so, yes, the tower is an owl. Both the towers are owls. And, yes, it's all Illuminati. Uh, go ahead, caller. Okay, yeah, you're talking about the number of dead from uh, uh, non-combatants that have been killed by governments. I read one book has put the number over 151 million from the top 15 regimes this this century alone, which is four times the number of people killed in war. And these are mostly UN um, uh, members and dictators that are members of the UN. I want to just advise anybody if they want to start a good book to start reading on any of this. A great one is Secret Records Revealed, which is a chronology of yeah, Doctor Dennis Cuddy. Years. Yeah, Doctor Dennis Cuddy. Huh? Dr. Dennis Cuddy. Yeah, exactly. And it's a great one. And if you go on Amazon, you buy it. Okay, any we, we don't do that here, sir. This is a nonprofit show. And uh, we don't, uh, you can't sit here and tell people what to go get or buy. Uh, so sorry. Uh, not, can't, and I don't mean to hang up on you. We just have to do that here. This is a nonprofit show. A few final news articles. And Mike, will you come jostle the clock for me? It isn't working, so I don't know when we're out of here. The equipment is literally falling apart in the studio. It's unbelievable. Uh, So come in here and jostle the clock for me, please, because I don't know when this show's out of here. A few final news articles here that uh, we were going to go over. These are important. Uh, there's quite a few of them. Uh, Mike, tell you what, go ahead and give me a, news, a, a close shot. I want to show people this, please. And again, the clock isn't working. I don't know if you're on the phone or what, but I need you to come in and get the clock working. I'm sorry to have him come in here. It's just that, again, it's falling apart here. I don't think he hears me. <laughs> okay, Mike. I don't know what's going on, but all right. Uh, U.S. videos for TV news come under scrutiny. Now, I call this uh, propaganda placement. Uh, I call this propaganda placement. It's not product placement. $70 million uh, for these things that look like newscasts to air on TV, but they're not newscasts. Uh, they're, they're, they're actors, and I've seen one of these online. It's just a Bush worship fest about how he's a gracious leader and, you know, he loves us so much and gives us so much. And... When you see a movie and there's an anti-gun message or a pro-torture message, the government needs to torture us, that's what they're doing. That's what they're promoting. So understand that this is only the tip of the iceberg. Bill Clinton did this. Bush is doing it. It's out of control. And uh, it's deceptive. It doesn't say it's an infomercial. It's not for Bush's campaign. Uh, you know, on the surface, they just say, you know, Karen Ryan reporting. It's fake newscast. Seventy million dollars of it 70 million dollars they've already spent 44 million on these so please wake up just just please wake up another thing in fort wayne indiana the newspapers decided to publish the names of concealed carry permit owners as a form of harassment so criminals know where to break in and the rest of it i'm out of time it was a pretty good show got frustrated a little bit there Infowars.com, 
prisonplanet.com or the websites. And uh, you have a great uh, day and uh, take care.